What's up you guys, it's Adana. welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. So I am going to talk to you guys about how to pay off your loans after you've gone to PA school. So typically most PA students will get some form of a loan. Uh, that loan may be like a personal loan from a family or friend. Um, it may be a private loan from an actual like bank or uh, a federal government loan. And typically that is how PA students pay for school because you're not working usually when you're in PA school. Unless you're going to one of those like three-year programs that are actually like part-time or you know a hybrid program or something where you can actually still work. There are those options. But for the majority of us, we get loans. And so what are we gonna do? Your loan can be anywhere from like 50,000 plus dollars for your PA program, like the full two years, mind you, which is significantly cheaper than um, actual med school. So that is a plus, but uh, you still have to pay for it. So how are you going to do that? I have three ways that I think are beneficial that you might wanna look into that you can actually pay for your PA schools schooling. So the first way is going like getting a job that has loan repayment. So most jobs offer this, um, at least most of the jobs that I were offered, offered a loan repayment. Um, and you like you had to stay a certain amount of time, like it varied from job to job, obviously. But um, after a certain amount of time, like on the job, they would start paying back your loan which is a plus because that is something that you don't necessarily have to pay for. You're working, you're getting paid, you're loving your job as a certified PA and you're paying off your debt all at the same time. So I think that that is a really good option for most of us um, and that's really the route that the majority of us do take, which is getting a job that does some form of loan repayment. And there are a plethora of them out there. You just have to like search for them really and truly. So once you've graduated, and you know, you've passed your pants, you've become certified, in your whole um, actual like applying for a job, you can also negotiate this as well. So even if your job doesn't necessarily offer loan repayment, that might be something that you might be willing to negotiate into your contract if they are paying you like, less than the national average. So you can be like, okay, well, you know, this is what the market um, says for my particular position. However, you're offering this, so can you also do loan repayment? And that is really a good option. Another one is getting a loan forgiveness program. So there are many loan forgiveness programs out there. Um, and again, it's really not like, I mean, like, it's, it's loan forgiveness, but at the same time, it's loan repayment. You're like giving back your time. So like those like National Health Corps um, scholarships, I guess you could say, those programs where you work in an underserved community for like two years or three years um, and you give them back your time and they will pay off all of your student loan and debt. And you like that that's like one of the best things you could possibly do, especially if you were already interested in working in an underserved community. Um, so there are those programs out there. You really just have to like Google them, look into them, like for the healthcare professional and specifically for PA school or PA um, for PA students. You can type that into Google as well, and they will pop up. Those you do typically have to apply for, um, but I mean it's better than not applying for anything at all and then just ending up with a lot of debt that you're paying out of pocket um, out of that new check that you're gonna be getting as a PA. So those programs are very, very beneficial to those that are looking at um, actually giving back their time to uh, a particular area or a city or, or um, state. Uh, when you're actually working as a PA. So that is a second option for you. Um, the last option that I think everybody really can do or like actually like put a little bit, play a part in this is live below your means. So for some students, you know, you're still able to like go home and live with your parents. And if you're able to do that, then that is a great option for you. Because then that way you can actually like live well below your means. You can still pay your parents rent, of course, and then save up money to actually pay off your loan in a much quicker fashion. Depending on how much money you borrowed, obviously that will take less time if you borrowed less money or 
more time if you borrowed more money, but you can work that out in terms of how much you're trying to save and how much you're trying to spend. Another option is just really like if you are, you know, married and truly like adulting with kids and stuff, you can still uh, live well below your means, you know, get a little like a one bedroom apartment or two bedroom apartment, depending on if both you and your spouse are working. You can literally like bank all of your check to pay off the loan while you live off of your spouse's check or vice versa. Depending on who makes more money, you can bank the other person's check to pay off the loan. And then that way that's one less debt that you actually have to pay um, as, you, as the years continue on. And then you can do a vice versa uh, depending on if your spouse also has like student loan debt or something along those lines. But living below your means, although it may be difficult for some people to do because they're like, man, I just got this new job. I'm making some money. Like I was poor all in PA school. Now I can actually like live my best life. <laughs> you know, you might want to like go ahead and spend that money. But I think that it would be important for you to realize, hey, like I will be in a better position in the years to come if I'm able to get out of debt a lot sooner. So those are my three options, my three tips for you all, um, if you haven't already thought of them. Uh, if you have some tips that you've thought of that I didn't mention, because I only mentioned three, leave them in the comment section below so that we can all read them and see. Uh, also, if you have any questions or comments for me, leave them in the comment section below as well. Follow me on Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like this video. I will talk to you guys next time.